I'd serve, I suppose. All right. Uh. So, will you guys sell to me yet? Uh, no. No, you won't. Okay, I don't know if you ever will. And 9S is becoming very, very edgy. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we made... We made Pascal kill herself to get the Z ending. Help! Help me! Are those machines fighting each other? So let me... Or not kill herself, we, we, we killed Pascal. Right. Oh, that's a moose. Stop attacking the moose. Alright, there we go. Alright. Uh-huh, machine, thank you. Okay, I'll let you live. Go go up to your people. Alright. So, okay, now we have to go back in here. Is Anemone here? Are we gonna get, like, some more backstory between Anemone and A2? Yes. Number two, you're still alive. I haven't been in touch, Nemini. You survive. You survive. That's all that matters. But I fear that all your fighting companions are long gone. I had to kill number uh, number twenty-one with my own hands. I'm sorry. No, it's. Oh, that's right. Did you know there was a Yora member here named Two B that looked just like you? She's. She's dead. What? Two B is dead. I killed her. She was infected with a logic virus. Oh. Well, please make yourself at home in our camp. I'll have someone show you around. Not necessary. Memories are contained in this sword. Let's see. You can go ahead and use our old room then. I'm in charge of the camp here. I'll make sure to tell everyone about you. Okay. So, that's how. Whenever we did, like, the whole weird brain thing. Because we're using her sword. For memories. Okay. Fuel filter, try the weapon. Wait, what? Why do I need a fuel filter? Need a fuel filter? Sorry, but I'm out. You'll have to ask Anemone when new stock is going to arrive. Demon sword. Hey man, if, if 9S could pull himself together from multiple robot memories or some shit at the end of the, the first and second pass, then you know what? Memories in a sword is fine. <laughs> Hey, Nemini, got a question for you. Any chance you can spare a fuel filter? Fuel filter? I'm afraid our, sub rec our supply recently ran out. Pascal makes them for us, so you could go pick one up directly if you'd like. Pascal? You know him? You trade with the enemy? This village is different. They've never caused us... Or this village is different. They never caused us any harm. No, wait. Forget it. This may be hard to understand, but we forge an alliance and trade materials when, we, when the need arises. Can't be picky about how we reach our goals around here. Besides, we aren't so far gone that we kill machine lifeforms after they surrender. Alright. Well, now... Nope. Just keep talking about that. Is she... Oh, hey, man. It's the voice. filter will cause significant problems with fuel distribution. Proposal. Replace the faulty part immediately. Yeah, I know. Coordinates confirmed for a colony centered around the machine lifeform known as Pascal. Location marked on map. You don't know when to shut up, do you? Alright. Oh, there's something over here. Oh, hey! It's, uh, you. Wait, you're a shop? Go back, you need anything? What do you sell? Type 3 sword, type 3 blade. Those are expensive. Well, I probably have things I, I need to sell anyway. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so... Moose meat. Boar meat. Grab bracelet. Precious earrings. And five machine cores. Alright, there's... That fixes the money issue. <laughs> Alright, two new weapons. 
No, don't don't equip them. And then Devola has a quest. You're looking for something? No, I I'm talking to. Wait, oh okay. Are they? Oh, they're both separate shops. Wait. Say you think you'd be able to give us a hand with a certain odd job? Devola, please. Well, what else can we do? Ever since that huge ass tower showed up, we've been short on people and supplies. Keep getting distracted by little things. We'll never get those resistance members repaired. That's true, but. So there you have it. Anyway, mind lending us a hand? Sure. Great, much appreciated. Okay, so all we need are some strip screws, small gears, and machine oil. You can get strip screws from the machines that look like they've been stacked on top of each other. I think you can get small gears from the small machines with the short legs. You'll be able to find some machine oil near a deserted truck at the abandoned factory. Please don't put yourself in danger for this, all right? Pretty sure I have the, That's that everything stuff. Those redhead twins wanted. Guess I'll hand it over. Yep, I already have it all. My lady is probably seven. What? All right. Uh, let's see. Yep, that's everything. Thanks for the help. It's time for us to get to work, Devola. So, what are you guys making? It's an obvious daily necessities. We're often asked to handle various odd jobs around the camp. Why are they wasting the two of you on an odd job? Oh, it's no bother. We're happy to help however we can. Uh, frankly, we're thankful to just have a job of any kind. Anyway, enough gabbing. Here's your reward. Uh, guys, this is a lot. Just take it already. It's not like we have anything to spend it on. Go on, you earned it. Maybe you'll agree with us, uh, agree to help us again later. Let's see, mushrooms, pure waters. It's time. It's time. There's not a character in this game that's not my child. <laughs> All right. Hello. Pod upgrade. Pod A. Well, I want to do that. I probably do. Just to upgrade. Well, hmm. Hmm. This is the good one. Oh, simple gadget. Pure. Oh. I feel like I should wait for simple gadgets and upgrade the pod I use the most. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and they have another quest already. Uh, I love to sit here and chat, but we need to head out and take care of a job. There's a little crazy around here at the moment. I need to get these materials post haste and He says, just ask already. Let me guess, you need a scrap collector? No, oh, we couldn't possibly ask. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a huge help. Yeah, but we can't keep asking people to... Yes, we can, sis. <laughs> just be grateful for the help. Anyway, I need you to track down some desert roses. It's a pretty rare plant, but I'd start by searching around the old ruins in the desert. I'm gonna put you through this, and please be careful. Some of the desert enemies are quite strong. Okay. So, I want to know what you sell. Oh, you both sell the same things. Okay. Yeah, stream isn't borking. Yeah. Yes, yes. How you doing, Kainem? Okay. Uh... Quick save, transport, desert center? Or no, des. Hold on. Uh. Where is that? I guess let's go to the housing complex and we have to go around and through there? Oh, there's a desert supply trader. Okay, we'll go. We'll go there first. The desert camp. I don't even know. Uh, okay, our main thing is replacing our fuel. Pump. I was gonna say I don't even know like what we're supposed to be doing right now, <laughs> like story-wise. But that delivery guy, yeah, he was just, he was here. He brought me a broken water purifier, which I already repaired and returned to him. Took it out to the storage facility forever ago. You tell me he's still not back? Storage facility is over in the city ruins. 
it helps keep it safe from enemy attacks and all that noise. Hell, he can still be there for all I know. Let me show you where it is. Alright. Transport to the Desert Housing Complex. Yeah, something about it sounds different. That Type 3 sword was a chainsaw blade thing. That sword can actually... That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot I bought those. Let me, let me look at them. Whenever I get my menu. There we go. Okay. So... Type 3 sword. Outdated Yorha model. Okay. Doesn't do much damage at level one. Uh, details. A data Yorha blade trusted by android veterans. Not the latest model, but proven in combat. Okay. Then... Type 3 blade. Probably the same thing. A uh, durable, older model Yorha weapon. Time-tested and proven for turning machines li turning machine life forms into scrap. Okay. I'm not gonna equip either of them because they're really weak, comparatively. Okay. Windows 7 sword. Oh. The way he was standing made me think he, he wasn't an enemy. We gotta go back to the this will not continue spot and then go through. I don't think we've returned here at all. So there might have been like a locked chest sitting out here the entire time. But I'm not 9S, so I can't get it. Right. Copper ore. Oh. Body. Rip chest completion, if that's the case. Yeah. I mean, we still have access to 9S, just not right now. It's whenever we get a chance to switch back. But there is one out here. Could make the Those trip. Those desert roses the twins wanted should be around here somewhere. But finding them is going to be a serious pain. Why are they running such dangerous missions in the first place? Okay. Uh, hmm. Where'd you come from? Oh, I got caught, man. Can I... I was like, can I please... Okay, do I have my camera now? I do. Hello. How are you? Alright. These guys are relatively weak. They're, they're, we're level 52, they're level 38. Wait, they pop up again? Even more of them popped up. Right. 
go. All right. Get all this stuff. Ooh, machine core. More? Okay. The grinding area? Oh, they spawn infinitely. Oh. Okay. Hold on, let me grab that. Is that the exit? Yeah, okay. Uh, I got Desert Rose. Pablo's there in 105. Okay. Came here and just farmed for machine cores because I was tired of not having money one time. That seems like a, a decent idea. I don't know how rare machine cores are. Um, oh, there's one. Okay. There's apparently another one like right around here. Let me zoom in on the map. Okay. Oh, it's probably okay. Okay, I, I'm seeing. I the. I hear something. Oh, oh no. I can't hack you anymore. Okay. Shit. Uh, I don't know where I need to be going. I'm just swinging wildly. <laughs> Can't see anything. Got a hard enemy. They're just annoying to fight. Especially here where I actually can't tell what's happening. I'm just holding down the shoot button. And pressing the attack button and waiting for him to blow up. Like that. Alright. <laughs> and continue on. Go. Is that the last desert rose? Yes. Okay. That's it for the desert roses. Time to head back. Here we go. Clean nut obtained. Yes. Did you come for business or pleasure? Doge, thank you for the host. Okay. Um. I think this would be closest. Yeah, yeah, then going all the way through. God damn it. All right. Ooh. 
Why have you not woken Did you up come yet? For business or pleasure? Espeons, thank you for the host. Do not say go. Yes, there we go. Only pleasure here, of course, of course. Ain't no business. What time is it? I gotta... So I know I'm cutting... Uh, near short night. I think we still have like an hour before I normally switch. We good. I have returned. Hey, thanks. This will be more than enough desert roses. This was an easy thank you. It kind of was. <laughs> meteorite charge, meteorite, full recovery, gold ores. All right. Cool. I don't get it. Oh. Why are the twins being stuck with all these crap jobs? Hypothesis. Continued crap jobs will eventually have a deleterious effect on the entire organization. I'd better talk to the lady in charge about this. That mean I need to talk to a ne- Yup. That's so what is it? Why are you scowling me like that? I see. This is about Devil and Popola. I understand how unfair how, how unfair it must seem for them to keep getting our most difficult and dangerous assignments. I'm afraid that's going to continue for a while. The others here, well, they still haven't forgiven them. Forgive them for what? And just who the hell are they anyway? That... It's something you should ask them directly. Okay. How you doing, Evie? Hey, you have a second? I got a little favor to ask. We need some tree sap to repair a tent. But there's some super strong enemies guarding it. We can't even dent the things with the flimsy little weapons we have, so maybe you can... Shut up for a second. <laughs> Why did you keep getting assigned for the most dangerous jobs? Not exactly equipped to handle this kind of thing. I... I'm sorry. We really should be handling our own tasks. Evola? Stop it, I'll, I'll take the job. Better at killing crap than you anyway. What was it you need again, tree sap? That's okay, we'll handle this one ourselves. Evola, I think we should accept the assistance. Come on, sis, we can't keep... Thank you, you have no idea how much this helps. Where the heck am I gonna find that? Search already performed. Regions rich in tree sap marked on map. Well, aren't you a helpful little box? That ought to be enough sap. Time to head back. Oh. Man, I need the tree sap. What are you doing? You're just holding a mug and like slumped over? Same. Like I'm okay with you or anything. <laughs> That's why I like her. Uh, hello, Ken. Did you manage to secure the tree sap? Thank you. I know this must have been difficult. Is Devil is sleeping? She was drinking. I think she finally passed out. She's been trying to cut back, but with things as rough as, as, rough as they are, well, everyone needs a release, I suppose. What do you mean, rough? It's not easy being a defective model, you know. In the past, a pair of models identical to ours caused a major incident. Popola, Popola! My glass ain't getting any fuller over here. Bunch of no good razzafrazzes. <laughs> oh, Devola. She does love that particular spirit. She makes it with Desert Rose, actually. Okay. So, our errand was to get Desert Rose so she could just drink away. I'm gonna try some if you like. Uh, was, uh, no, keep your goddamn hands off my booze. It's mine. Mine, I'm gonna drink it all up. Meow. What? Meow? She can say some pretty odd things in her sleep. Are you gonna have a belt or what? Oh, maybe next time. When I drink, well, it's not always a good thing. Let's leave it at that. Anyway, <laughs> so... Thank you again. You should take a bit of time to rest if you can. Popola's booze! Die, black Popola's booze. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see here. Uh, it's probably at the, let's see, at the top. Uh, 
Popple is booze. Uh, oh. Increases the power of weapon-based attacks by 50% for 30 seconds and restores 100% HP. That's really good. That is really good. I thought it was going to be like the drugs again. All right. How did you get that weapon? Oh, they died? Your weapons save the uh, external memories of whoever uses them. Please take care of her. Okay, so type three sword endurance up. Interesting. And then type three blade. I need silver ore to upgrade it again. Uh, okay, so... Weapons... I don't even know what that does. Increases defense. So it's a defensive blade, okay. That's cool. Uh, okay, so where are we going now? Oh yeah, we need to go to Pascal's village. Uh, but also sorting trouble. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's that quest. The 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 dude with the box maze. Okay, so city ruin center. We'll go there. Didn't die while I faded off. We were running there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the virus. Uh, whenever the screen went completely red, that was the drugs. <laughs> Which was pretty fun. I want more of it. <laughs> Could you imagine riding a moose on drugs? Like, yes. I, I absolutely want to try that. So this is all the crap the resistance was storing, huh? Help me! Alert. Voice patterns detected from inside storage facility. <laughs> of course. Of course this is how you get stuck. Fucking hell. <laughs> it's unquote that. <laughs> uh, okay. How am I going to get that? Well, I'll leave that there for now. I guess I pushed this over the item, past it. I was like, lady, you, you have the power to add commands if you want to. Right? Copper ore. Push this all the way into the wall there. Decide which ones are added. Nah, no, I'll I'll go through it. If I see one that like doesn't need to be there, like I'll get rid of it. But or ones that's that's like worthless. But nah. Uh. Okay. So that item. Pull this box. Can I pull this one? No. Oh, 
Hello. Oh, thanks a million. Sorry, but could you do me a favor and clear a path so I can get out of here? I hurt my leg trying to force my way out. Also, as you can see, I'm pretty big, so I need plenty of space. Are you following me? Trying or... Okay. Oh, that lets you out. Uh, I can't get that item, though. Here you go, dude. I got trapped in there while trying to get everything organized. My supervisor tore through the place like a tornado and ended up boxing me in. Uh, I tell you what, I just can't keep up with her and... It... God damn it, there you are. Uh, hi. Oh, jackass. There you are. This is a supervisor. What a supervisor to have. I haven't seen you in who the hell knows how long. Now I find you sitting here on your ass. And didn't I tell you to keep this place organized? Y yes, but you were throwing things all over the place and I got trapped. Something is in the way. Just blow it up. This is not, not freaking difficult. But I don't have any explosives. And build some. I mean, just look at all the crap around here. I could build ten bombs with this. There's no way to... Wow, 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 zip it already. Time to teach you some goddamn bomb-making skills. But I just got work in storage. I don't need to know how to make a bot. Cram it! Even a lowly warehouse man needs to know how to blow things up. Sorry my useless subordinate caused you so much trouble. You can have this. Not much, I know, but whatever. Anyways, I'll see you later. <laughs> uh, archive obtained Jackass's bomb recipe? Obtained a pod program repair. Okay. Let's check out the bomb recipe. Wait, what is this? Infant's machine's memories? Infant machine's memory. Where do we get this? So dark. Oh, is this like the weird thing in her brain? Rory, what should I do? Tell me what to do, mommy, please. I'll try my best. Please don't leave me alone. Okay. Jack has his bomb recipe. Three AM-11s from flight units, the corpse of a suitable android, five co cores from machine life forms capable of EMP attacks, an adequate amount of bonding agent, a container, I usually use a machine's head, but you be you. Assembly instructions, disassemble each AM-11 and contact, or connect the image unit to the helix. Ink out the connector cable from the dead android spine and strip it using a file or whatever. Uh, connect the cable and image unit, decode the machine life form cores, and embed the image units inside them, then mix in the bonding agent and reshape. Don't forget to insert the cones, it'll need to build explosive power. Once done with that, add some nails or whatever random shrapnel junk you have lying around. Arts and crafts. Alright. Then we got a pod program. Uh, repair. Emits a temporary beam capable of healing the combatants as long as they remain in the radius. Okay. Nice. Huh? What's that? Proposal. Use pot fire to force him to stop. Oh, I'm standing right next to a big arm robot and I didn't even notice him. But he hasn't swung at me yet. There we go. Whoa. go all right how you doing you could have just asked me to stop you know hey you're a2 aren't you must be fate that we ran into each other and since you're here you might as well buy something uh, it's this I can't can't buy any of them 
Look forward to serving you again. What was that? You want to know where I live? No. Well, I live deep, deep underground. Pick something deep, then go deeper. Free to visit me anytime you want. Okay. Let's see here. Why does it work now? Huh? I can't handle just going doodly doo. This is great. Okay, so Pascal's Village is the only quest around. All right. Only a resistance camp. She. It is she. Exclusive weapons. Never seen a meal outside of that that area right there. All right. Uh, oh, we're on the corner. I was gonna say, wait a second. Where is it? Quick save. Transport. Pascal's Village. So we actually visited Pascal's Village and like everyone was dead. So what's gonna happen now? Are they all alive now? Yeah. Machines everywhere. Analysis. This is a colony of pacifistic machine life forms trained by the unit known as Pascal. It is logical for a large number of machine life forms to be present. This pod has concerns regarding Yorha Unit A2's predictive skills. I'd be more concerned about me smashing your face if I were you. <sighs> I like her. A2 is great. Apparently at the next Summer Games done quick, someone is doing near Automata one-handed. One That's the woman from before. Thank you again for rescuing me. Now well, then, how can I help you? Um. Summary. Yora Unit A2 possesses a faulty fuel filter. She has obtained information from an enemy, leader of the resistance camp. She has traveled to this village in order to obtain a new filter. And summary. Request. One func functional fuel filter. I really need to spell it out like that. Analysis. A2's lack of verbal communication made this pod's assistance necessary. Shut up. Oh, I see, I see. Sadly, I'm a bit short of materials right now. I need rigid tree bark to create a filter, but the only location I know of is guarded by ferocious machine life forms. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't make a filter at the moment. Confirmation. Unit A2 will secure and deliver rigid tree bark. Don't confirm that by yourself. Areas where rigid tree bark is available. All right, so we need to go there. Oh, okay, okay. Analysis. Hostility toward the peaceful machine life for Pascal is pointless from an energy usage standpoint. Proposal, form a friendly relationship immediately. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my God. Okay. I really like A2. She's great. This this whole like A2 versus Pod thing. Oh my lord. Some fucking friends. Yeah, exactly. Hello. Get on the pig. All right. There we go. Ooh. 
All right. For that follow, appreciate it. And whack. Okay. I was supposed to say, the dude with the giant feet is still there. He didn't like join that fight like, at all. Just fine by me. All these items, though. Alright. Well, this one is, like, wearing the armor and stuff. I, I don't think we've seen one of those. Alright. They're fairly weak, though. Use you. There we go. How you doing, cool girl? Sid, welcome to the stream. Uh, okay, there's the rigid tree bark. Guess I'll go back to that machine. All right. The meat box. Here's the meat box, yes. Still know why it's named the meat box. We got to the top of it, and I... What? They two... We, we haven't fished in a while. Let's see here. I didn't skip leg day. Nah, you know, I definitely didn't. Hey, do an next kill. Fresh, but it's made of metal. <laughs> Full of spare body parts, so robot meat? I guess that would be the connection. Report. Fresh. All right. Let's go one more time. Let's see if we can find something fancy. It's on a stool while fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this this hologram, but like also like tangible stool that pops up anytime you fish. And that, that goes for any, any of the characters. I can't see what she caught. It was something like really, really tiny. Bite and it's detected. the same thing. Bite detected. Complete. What the fuck is that? That's a fucking like T Rex robot. Surrounded by drills. This is good. It's level 60. And it has a shitload of health. Okay. Dino Robo. For a second, I thought it was something I could ride. Seeing in the distance. Yeah. 
This thing has so much health, it's kind of ridiculous. Kill it. Tank here. It is very, very tanky, that is for sure. Oh god. Okay, new attack. But definitely take like able to be taken down. It's like uh, er when early game we we took out that like level twenty five robot when we were level four. You know the one of those situations. Holy shit. Berserk mode? Maybe? I... I don't know. Okay, one, one of the worms is dead. The thing, the thing about berserk mode with these guys, I'm taking so much damage because of stupid worms. Okay, I mean... Yeah, yeah, it's it's like under half hell. We've got like a fourth left or so. Are doing deep optic thought? This is Sardis. What the hell is going on? Uh, I found a random dinosaur, and I decided to kill it. Okay, this attack again. Okay, it's almost dead. A little spear dude here. that again. Oh, it's dead! It didn't, like, drop anything fancy unless it got shot over here. No. What I, what I just shoot at? Oh, it's a moose. Kill the goddamn worm. Ha! 
feed this kitten again. No problem. This is different, let's kill it. Good idea. Exactly. Alright. That's one dead. For another two dead. Where'd it go? It's like a Windows like 2000 screensaver. The way it's moving. Stop this. You're going to die, eventually. Oh god! It's too goddamn fast. Talking shit about it. Clearly. What's your HP at? Okay. You will die. Come on. All right. Get a mirage on it. Fuck. It was outside the bubble. By the rare Newming lady. Retreat for eternal Mews. On. At this point, okay, I was like, I'm just fighting you out of stubbornness at this point. Fuck. Alright. It's dead. Was it worth it? No, 100% not. But it's dead. Oh, what do we got over here? All right, all right. Let's head back to Pascal's village. I'm just not worth it because stubborn as fuck. True. True. An experience though. Yeah, I don't know how much experience we really got, though. I wasn't paying attention to that. Alright, I got your, your bark or whatever. Here's your stuff. Uh, thank you so much. I'll make a filter right away. Please just give me one moment. He can fly. <laughs> a parent. What do you mean he can? You watched. You saved him, and he went up in the air. What are you saying? Pascal has returned. Like clearly. Fuel filter. A uh, two. Can I help you with something? You gave me that filter for free earlier. I need to pay you back. It would be. It would bother me otherwise. Oh, uh, fucking. I. Whatever. Uh, yeah, so if you think of something, let me know. I do have a bit of a problem now that you mention it. Rocha's machine has been attacking our children in the area where they play. Possibly trouble you slave for us? 
Uh, alright. Wants to repay you for the trouble. Vanquish the bad bot. Alright, it's time. We can go... We can go kill the bully. What the fuck? That's not what I expected to be down here. Alright. Yeah, just an angry horse. Which via that nasty creature? Thank you so much. Here's your reward. Please take it. Memory alloys, sturdy sockets, medium recovery. Noise. Oh, this village because I detest fighting. I wanted to stand as a monument to the power of peace. When we surrender our weapon, or but when we surrender our weapons, we lost the ability to defend ourselves. Uh, now many within the village want us to rearm and vanquish nearby enemies in order to preserve our peace. What do you think we should do, A2? Don't know. That's for you to decide. Yes, I suppose so. But let your village your friends know. If anyone tries to attack me, I'll wipe this place clean off the map. Make a firm note of it. Uh, A2, if you like, you're welcome to take a look around our village. It'd be nice for you to know more about us. Sure, if I feel like it. Achievement unlocked the mercenary. What is that? 80% of all quests complete. That's what that achievement is. A. Sis, hey big sis! Huh? Come on, big sis, play with us! I don't play with machines now. Get lost. Come on, I wanna play with you! I'm an android, weirdo. I'm your enemy. So do what I say before I kick your sorry ass. You're funny! It's not supposed to make you happy. Big sis, make us something to play on, big sis! What? No. We need something to play on! Yeah, it's boring right now. Seriously? They sell stuff in the tool shop. Go buy us something. Yeah, buy something for us. <laughs> alright, alright, just quit bugging me already. Yay, we did it! Alright. Welcome. You're looking for play equipment for the children? I'm afraid we don't have anything like that in stock at the moment. However, I'm sure I could build something with the proper materials. Tell you what, here's a list of what I need. Give me those materials so I can get to work. We're not here as everyone around here is weirdly pushy. Don't be absurd, we're not. Fine, I'll do it. You'll just bug me about it every waking minute of my life otherwise. An excellent choice. You should be able to find what you need at the amusement park. Oh, hell, that's forever from here. Safe travels. It's really not. This is going to suck. <laughs> uh, okay, that's main story stuff. Haskell has a quest. Louis, too, I appreciate all the time and effort you took uh, for our children. Every one of them is a singular treasure to me. Indeed, they are treasures to the entire village. Our very future rests in their little hands. I imagine you find it odd for machines to speak of the future like this. I don't know. But just that our children can stand strong against the senseless conflicts of this world and ablaze a new trail for our people. However, one of the children is suffering from a faulty storage element. If we don't do something for the child, so repair it already. Alas, we lack the parts to do so. They can only be found deep within the abandoned factory. That area is swarming with terrible machines. Painted to say this, but you, A2, are the only one we can turn to. Thank you so much. The required part is the air in the area known as the abandoned factory. We really do appreciate this. Okay. Oh. Uh, I really respect Pasco, you know? I mean, he's the one who who thought the thought to build this village for us, outcast. I need to show him how thankful I am. If only there was some way to thank him. Some way. Yeah, yeah, I take the, I can take the hint. No hint, I just want to show Pascal how appreciate he is. Anyway, I was thinking he might like a new philosophy book. Here they have such things over in the resistance camp. Alright, I'll get your book. I owe that little clunker a favor too anyway. Oh, that's wonderful. Apparently someone named Anemone has a large collection of such books. You just need to go steal one. Uh, yeah, no, I think there's a better way. Go steal one, yeah. Oh my 
Get ladder. There we go. How you doing, Wolf Tamer? Alright, so... Amusement Park. And we need to go. Tell you. Here with a boot. Nice. <laughs> expect you to puke. Oh, god damn it. All right. 9S. Right here. Gotta remember that one. Material. Are you good? No. They're absolutely not good. Junk. Broken. I. Yeah, I'm killing you. You got toy parts in you? Nope. I killed you anyway. I just brought out like nine wooden spoons and took that as a threat to my life. I mean, as you should. Okay, there's like a, a high-pitched beeping in this area. And I hate it. I hate it so much. Make it go away. Bolt! Restrains and shocks one nearby enemy, causing continuous damage over- Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's try that. did anything. Not to that guy, anyways. Huh. Uh, that's a, yeah, it, it sounds like it stopped, whatever it was. Thankfully. Okay, so there's something back over there that I missed. Betty, yeah, yeah, it's a party tank. Until you you actually attack it, and then then it actually, you know, just a real tank. <laughs> oh, there it is, finally. This should be everything I need to make those bratty kids happy. Better take it to that creep in the tool shop. What? 
right. Uh... Oh wait, factory. Go to the factory. We'll take them both and complete them both at the same time. Factory. Okay. But still, I've been able to see these for a while. I've never reached them. Wonder when we will. Talk to enemy when she's not a quest objective. Okay. Oh, it's the leftover corpses of the of the cult bots. Okay, that chest was not there before. So that's a new one. Okay, it's it. Hmm. I wonder if by deep in here they mean like. Can I? Why? Is it because I'm in this stupid camera mode? element. It looks like I'm on the same plane as it, so I don't think it's going to be down with the cults. Hey, he's just... He's stunned and was just taking ticks of damage. Stop that. Also, okay, like, not get stunned enough, or what was the deal? I definitely like Mirage more than Volt, but it's a, the Volt's pretty neat. I'll give it that. Enemy machines destroyed. Go. So this is the part Pascal wanted. Can't believe I'm killing machines to save a machine. <sighs> now screw it. Better go see Pascal. All right. I don't like this camera mode. Yeah, the the side scrolling cameras are strange. I, I'm still not sure how I feel about them. Um, with the the laser pod makes this the full on side scroll better. The top down is eh, eh. Okay, what was I? There's someone, something I wanted to do, but I don't remember. Oh, pod program. Give me Mirage. Like this one's really, really good. Makes made side scrolling kind of kind of fun just to see it go through all of the enemies. But the top down is. Eh. Oh wait, I can still blow these up. I can't. Cool. Become as gods. 
Did we figure out the hammer was good for the proper side scrollers too? Uh, I think. Was that yellow stuff oil, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so let's... Well, if we're supposed to get a book, let's go ahead and grab the book. I mean, if a whole game is like top down, it's made to be that way. That's fine with me. I just did. I don't. I'm not a fan of how you know this combat is with the random top down. I think it works for the ship mode because this one, like, you have jumping and everything, and that. I don't know. I don't feel like it translates too well to the top down, but it works really well for the ships. Pesco wants, books, wants books on philosophy. Well, as it happens, I just finished this one the other day. You're welcome to take it if you like. Thanks. Could you give him this gold ore as well? He's been asking for this for a while, and I finally managed to get my hands on some. All right. Uh, it seems odd that a machine life form would be into philosophy, don't you think? Makes me wonder how much we really know about our enemy. I wonder. You've changed, number two. The way you talk and act is completely different from how you were in the past. And you've become a true leader. I'm nothing compared to Rose. Actually, I, well, I have the record stored on that external drive. I thought I should preserve memories of the time we fought together. I also think you have a right to see them. You and I must never forget. I know. Like the file. Right. Oh, wait. Is it gonna be like a cutscene or something? Maybe not yet. My name is Anemone. And I lead the Android Resistance. This is a record of the battles I've experienced and my losses. I leave it here as a warning to myself. The machine life form attack lands far too close for comfort. I smell an acrid odor. I know that some of my hair has been singed off. Anemone, retreat for now. That's an order. That's my Captain Rose. I obey her without hesitation, running from the front as soon as I take out a few nearby enemies. F uh, feet flying beneath me, I leap into, th into the hastily built trench where my resistance comrades are gathered. How many battles is this now? The same sights and sounds? The same struggle of attrition? My resistance forces play the same war on repeat, with no end in sight. I don't even remember why we're fighting anymore, but I must continue regardless. Uh, I must continue until one side or the other is dead. This music is, yeah. This looks bad, Shion. What do we do? Come down, Lily. We'll find an opening somewhere. You don't search for an opening. You make one. Dolly, oh wait. Okay, there's all these names popping up that we've never heard of. I grab Dahlia's arm before she can flee the trench and turn to Rose. She brought us here, after all. She must have a plan of some kind. But as the enemy horde closes in, Rose simply squints off in the distance. There's been a change in enemy movements, she says finally. Someone's just started fighting over there. That's not possible, stammers Margaret. We're all here. Margaret's right. Only nine of us left capable of fighting the machines. Captain Rose, Gerbera, Lily, Sonia, Erica, Margaret, Chion, Dahlia, and me, Anemone. Okay. I can hear his Piku's mixed with this song. <laughs> For all that's left of the eight, uh, eighth dis, uh, descent forces, one that took place roughly 200 years ago, an, un an uneasy Sonia pulls Shion close and chews on a loose strand of her hair. I don't like it, she says. If it's some kind of machine trap, I wait for a while, heart pounding, until I hear the enemy fire lesson. Okay, I say. This looks like our chance. Let's pull back. Someone's fighting out there, and Emily cries, Dahlia, we can't abandon them. Oh, so you want to risk all our lives for some stranger? Come on, we don't even know if this mystery fighter is on our side or not. 
That's not what I said. Enough, you two, barks Xion. The captain makes the final decision on this. After Xion speaks, all of us turn to Captain Rose. She looks us in the eyes and nods slowly before starting to speak. Ribera? The enemy is heading toward the explosive we set up earlier, yes? Ribera thinks for a moment. Now that you mention it, yeah, they are. A slight smile crosses Rose's face, yet she still seems perfectly composed. Good. If this goes well, we might be able to take them all out. I want all of you to leave this trench and get to the, those explosives, says Rose. Well, let the blast take them out, or take out most of them, then clean up the stragglers. Identifying our own unknown mystery fighters can wait until we're done. No one objects to the captain's decision. No one she issues the order, we all leap from the trench as one, one and re-enter the fray. It's a nervous habit, chewing on hair. I mean, yeah, yeah, I got, I caught that, but like, god damn. It was weird that it, it wasn't her own hair. <laughs> Uh, when we reach the battle, we find what appears to be another set of androids dressed in strange black outfits. Before they know what's happening, we detonate the explosives, killing the remaining machines, and turn our guns in their direction. All right, I say to the stranger, start talking. Easy, one of the, the mystery androids, or says one of the mystery androids, we're on your side. But the new models rolled out as part of something called Project Yorha. Really, I say? We haven't heard anything about new models. Probably speak... I'll probably speak with more bluster than necessary. I have to make sure they're actually on our side. I don't think they're lying necessarily, but I can't read their expressions thanks to the giant goggles they wear. And frankly, a little caution never goes amiss in the middle of a war. We learn that the four androids refer to each other as number two, number four, number 16, and number 21. They also aren't in a hurry to share much more. Our mission is top secret, one of them says. That's why you haven't heard about us yet. I slowly draw my knife in an attempt to gauge their reaction. So in other words, no one will know any better if I kill you right now. Stand down, Anemone, says Rose softly. No, cries Elise. She's right. We've all seen how quickly the enemy is evolving. Who's to say these four aren't machines that just look human? My companion's not in agreement. This damn war has made us all suspicious. One of the strangers, number 16, I believe, draws a long knife from its sheath. If it's a fight you want, she says, I'm happy to give it to you. Before I can respond, Dahlia leaps in front of me with her weapon at the ready. This is it. We're going to fight. But just before the battle can erupt, the android called number two steps forward. Wait, she says. There used to be 16 of us, says number two, but the others died during the descent. We're isolated and alone out here. Reinforcements aren't coming. And that means we have to finish this mission with the soldiers we have left. We don't need more enemies right now. What we need is allies. She finishes this speech with a soft sigh, as if trying, to f trying and failing to hold her emotions in check. I know that sort of voice. It's the voice of someone who still has hope, despite all the odds. Uh, archive obtained, Resistance Rose and Resistance Anemone. There's more, okay. This is interesting. Soon to include bombs in her arsenal. Oh no. I am a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not what I expected to, to see, but holy shit, that's great. Alright, according to the Yorha team, there's an enemy server beneath Mount. Ka'ala. If we take it out, we might finally gain some ground in this endless war. But in order for this to happen, we need to work together. After a bit of thought, Rose decides to throw in with the new models. It's a relationship that changes as time goes on. What are you doing, Dahlia? Just showing this idiot how weak she is, replies a winded Dahlia. <laughs> Weezer their opponent, number 16. You're obviously outmatched. The two of them are taking turns hitting each other. It seems friendly enough as things go. Plus, they'd been doing it for so long now that the both of them are out of energy. They likely couldn't punch through a piece of paper at this point. The rest of the group stares at the combatant and tries not to grin. Dolly and number 16 seem to butt heads over the smallest little things. Maybe it's because they're so much alike. It's almost annoying how quickly muscle heads turn to like one another. Uh, the rest of us converse as Dolly and 16 continue to spar. We each call others by names that I give us, explains Rose. I see, responds number four. I thought it's strange that you didn't use code numbers. 
She nods while she speaks, as though this all makes perfect sense. Suddenly, Captain Rose breaks out into a wide grin. You know what, she says. I think we should give all you names as well. No, says number two, it would be a waste. Rose eyes her, eyes her warily. Uh, a waste? You can name me when the mission is over, she replies as a blush rises in her cheeks. Aw. Number two is 2A. Of course, the other ones I, I presume are dead. I could tell her words are also, I could tell her words also served as a wish for success. All right, responds Rose. I'll think of a name for you by then. She knows this is a fleeting promise, as most such things are, but it doesn't matter. Already I can, already I can see us growing closer to the Yorha team. Well, my friends are growing closer to them, at least. They're all being careless. I state much louder than I intended. Luckily, the others, uh, the others either don't hear or decide to ignore it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not about to go against the captain's judgment. But that doesn't mean I'm ready to just lie down and trust our new friends. Ours is a solitary existence that has long since been abandoned by the moon. No matter how they how they cried, mourned, or struggled, the voices of our departed comrades went unanswered. So how can you trust an entire squad of new models that you just met? What's wrong, Anemone? I hear Lily calling to me. She's likely concerned about me being apart. Like concerned about me being apart from the rest of the group. Nothing, I begin. I'm fi Before I can complete my thought, Lily suddenly opens her mouth and emits a terrible scream. Lily's scream echoes through the entire camp. It's heartbreaking. It's agony. It's horrible. She's infected, screams Rose. Lily's infected. We all draw weapons out of instinct as much as anything else, pointing them at our comrade as she continues to scream and scream and scream. We all know what's happening. We've seen it before. It's a logic virus, a machine weapon that hijacks android systems and overrides their data. And since there's no known cure, it's also a death sentence. I need to show her mercy. I need to set her free. My finger rests on the trigger, yet I hesitate. And before I can make that final fateful decision, I hear a voice rise up from somewhere behind me. Stop! You can't do this! You can't just let your friend die! It's number 21. The girl I thought to be cool and composed beyond all measure was now pleading with me to spare Lily's life. What do I do? What the hell do I do? Lily said you were like a family to her. You can't abandon family, not before you exhaust every possibility. What can you do then? I'll use my power to erase the virus. It's impossible. Rose spat out what we were all thinking, but before we can act, Lily starts to send nearby comrades flying with impossible strength. I've seen infective androids, infective and infected androids before. I know how much damage they can do once the virus turns off their limiters. They'll fight and fight until they're utterly destroyed. Dolly and number 16 rush into the fray, trying to suppress their former friend, but she swats them away like flies. How many of us have been infected now? How many friends have I been forced to put down? The heart I'm supposed to have aches with that with, aches with a thought. It aches as I remember all the identification numbers that have been retired. When did I start giving them names? When did I decide I simply couldn't endure it any longer? Initiating reprogramming sequence. That voice. Number 21? She's screaming about something about... Reprogramming? I don't know what to do. I'm lost. As my vision slowly clears, I see number 21 inputting commands into her terminal, while number 2 and number 4 hold her down. They hold her as she rises, then... Rose stares at me with surprise. Oh no. I'm holding Lily too. Shooter, she's infected. See, archive obtained attacker 4, scanner 21, and gunner 16. Ooh, okay, so this gives more character to them instead of just number 4, number 21, number 16. This is what their roles are. Alright, more. See, the 14th Machine War Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor Descent. The name of the mission entrusted to the Yorha soldiers. Was there ever such furious gunfire? Such bombings that continue without pause? Our target is the machine under er, machine server under Mount Kaala, and our situation is dire. We need reinforcement, requesting deployment at once. Number two speaks quickly, yet calm. Which is all the more remarkable considering the hostile army closing in on our position. The commander's center. But the command center in the orbiting satellite informs us no reinforcements will be forthcoming. 
I like that story. This is a good story, yeah. We're abandoned. We're alone. It's so easy to do from up here. Or from up there. From the satellite. From the moon. I'll do whatever is necessary, says Lily with a grim smile. Dolly and Margaret quickly nod in agreement, as does number 16. They decide to join the rear guard, staying behind to be our shield. Even though it comes at the cost of their own lives. Regardless, they all agree without hesitation. For we in the vanguard would be joining them in death soon enough. Without another word, we turn our backs on each other and take up positions. We know this is the end. Dolly and the others will buy us time to reach the gate at Ka'ala's Peak. Beyond that lies an elevator, and beyond that is the server. If we can destroy it, we'll deal a devastating blow to machine life forms throughout the Pacific region. But as I notice number 21 scowling at the elevator, I start to have a bad feeling about the final stage of our mission. Go on, she says. I've got this. We crowd into the elevator as she begins hacking the terminal. She doesn't need to tell us what's happening. It's clear that the elevator won't descend all the way to the server unless someone stays behind to control it. Enemy is incoming. They're almost on us. As I speak, I suddenly find myself leaping from the elevator and taking up a position at number 21's side. Almost as if my body's out of my control. Something is wrong. Something... I'll back up number 21, I, I cry. The rest of you take out that server. The door is closed on my friends. Last thing I see is the face of my captain, Rose. She looks concerned, but then the door shut and she's no more. That was the last time I ever saw them. But it's alright. I'm going to finish this one way or another. The only sounds we hear are distant explosions and the rasp of 21's, or number 21's breathing. Thank you, she whispers, for staying with me. I look, at, I look at her eyes and see the telltale red of a logic virus infection. I was right after all. Sigh softly as I draw my weapon. I've seen comrades infected before. That's why I couldn't leave her to die alone. The vaccine she gave Lily is already ineffective. The enemy has evolved. They study number 21's patterns and developed a new resistance. No one can save her now. But when the elevator reaches the server, begins number 21 weekly, then I'll give you peace, I reply. The elevator moves ever lower, creating a countdown on number 21's life. How much time has passed? How much time can possibly be left? Too long to wait, yet not long enough for regret. A massive explosion echoes in the distance as the hail slowly shakes, or as the hall slowly shakes. It's the final act of Lily and the others in the rear guard. They just overloaded their own fusion reactors. The sound of our comrades' demise slowly fades from our ears. As it does, number 21 reaches up and slowly removes her goggles. I'm glad I got to meet you, she says. Her eyes are so red, but not completely. There's still a little of herself left. And while it is... Don't worry, I say. I'll be with you soon. She smiles as my words reach her ears. As soon as the elevator touches down, I fire a bullet into number 21's brain. I watch the thing that used to be her tumble to the ground. I stare at the gun I hold in trembling hands. I press it to my own- I press it to my temple. This will end it all. The war? My meaningless existence? All of it. It will finally be over. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. Your comrades sacrifice themselves and fight to the last breath. They feel suffering, they feel sadness, they feel pain and terror. And yet you would surrender now? Unforgivable! The voice is a battlefield curse, telling those who survive to see their mission through no matter what. It is another me crying out. I scream at the top of my lungs and race down the hall. I'll show you. If you're going to push me, I'll show you. You'll only be satisfied if it ends with more killing. I leap into the fray with weapons in both hands. Here I am. Here I am. Kill me. As I scream, an explosion suddenly rises up and sweeps everything away. A soft wind touches my cheek. I smell fire. I smell ash. The explosion in the server room was powerful enough to take out Mount Ka'ala itself, reducing the once proud summit to a smoking crater. The machines immediately drop to the ground and stop moving. I look out over the scorched earth. Lily, number 16, Rose, number 2, are any of you... I'm the only one left. The only one. I was alive because I had been afraid to die. I begin to giggle. It's a mad thing, crazed even to my own ears. I'll join you soon. You promised to join her soon. How could I have said such vain, laughable words, such lies? I'll, I laugh. I stand in the smoke and the flame and laugh until I think my very throat will tear itself in two. I blink. Daylight drifts through the smoke. I've been standing here all night. My laughter finally depleted. I force myself to my feet. I'm the coward who stayed behind. The coward who lived. Now it's my job to carry on the will of those who fought at my side. Since I can't kill myself, I have to fight until someone does it for me. I'll endure every hardship. 
I'll kill every machine I find. This is my cross to bear. I walk slowly into the west, dragging my broken body along. Hmm. Okay. Uh, archive Yorha Attacker 2, Pearl Harbor Descent Summary. Number 16, number 21, number 4. I'm sorry I'm still alive. But I'll be joining you as soon as I finish some things up. Alright. Well. So, this is... Okay. Gunner 16... A unit from the experimental Yorha Squadron that was utilized during the 14th Machine War. Number 16 possessed a rough and tumble personality, ideal for her role as a gunner. Where she was required to attack foes from a distance. Though she possessed a defiant streak that extended even to her superiors, she was assigned to the, to the mission anyway, due to her tremendous offensive abilities. During her squad's assault on Mount Ka'ala, number 16 voluntarily stayed behind and hold... Uh, stayed behind and hold off the machine lifeform army so her companions could continue up the mountain. She fought with great courage alongside members of the local resistance group. She managed to hold off overwhelming numbers until the appearance of a Goliath that was unaffected by ordinary weaponry. Seeing no other way to end the fight, she chose to destroy the enemy by overloading and detonating her own fusion reactor. This act of self-sacrifice, despite her defiant nature, is one of remarkable interest and likely merits further study. So, 21 was a scanner. A unit from the experimental Yorha squadron that was utilized during the 14th machine... War number 21 possessed a cool and analytical personality that perfectly fit her role as a scanner. Her first and perhaps most impressive achievement using, was using her analytical abilities to cure a member of a local resistance group who had been infected by a logic virus. Unfortunately, she fell victim to the same virus shortly thereafter during the assault on the Mount Kaala server. Though she fought valiantly, the virus had evolved into a form that she could no longer remove, which eventually led to her asking an allied unit to end her life. Experimental Yorha Unit Number 21's initial success against the virus had been determined to be valuable information regarding how to construct barriers against machine life forms, and should be included in the basic systems of all the subsequent Yorha Squadron members. So, attacker number four. The virus wasn't anything new, but it had gotten way, way worse. Yeah, it, it like evolved to a point where the the old like they called it the antidote, like reprogramming that they saved Lily with. Um, wasn't enough to save the newly evolved virus that took Scanner 21. Uh, okay, so Attacker 4, a unit from the Experimental Yorha Squadron that was utilized during the 14th Machine War. Though Attacker number 4 possessed an unusually bright and cheerful personality, she still managed to be effective when it came to engaging in close quarter combat. In addition to providing a moral boost to the a morale boost to the group, this unit also used her sunny disposition to form an alliance with a local resistance group. She was eventually killed during the, the assault on the Mount Ka'ala server, the cause of which was a self-directed overload of her own fusion reactor. Further research reveals that she undertook this action as a means of protecting her companion, attacker number two. On further note, while this unit's cheerful personality provided certain benefits to overall unit morale, was also responsible for a decrease in, in fighting spirit during intense combat. As such, it has been deemed inappropriate for future combat models. Okay, attacker number two. So this is A2. A unit from the experimental Yorha squadron that was utilized during the 14th Machine War. She specialized in close quarters combat and was programmed to have a neutral personality. Attacker number two took command of the squadron after the death of its original number, uh, original captain number one. Despite it issuing many, or despite issuing many questionable commands during her initial time in a leadership role, she eventually formed a working relationship with the Resistance and succeeded in destroying the enemy server located on Mount Ka'ala. While the experimental Yorha Unit Number Two possessed great growth and adaptability, or adaptability abilities, she also deserted her post following the destruction of the server, and as of this moment, she has yet to be apprehended. Our R&D group is currently conducting further research to determine whether or not there were issues with this model's personality settings. The missing experimental unit, now designated A2, will be handled by the Type E division. The so Type E, we had a quest for those. Those are the, the insane assassins. 
Yeah, so I, that's what I'm... From the story, everyone died in the explosion blowing up the mountain in the server, but apparently... Two, or A2 was still able to get away from that explosion? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Resistance Rose. This android encountered by the experimental Yorha Squadron is the leader of a group composed of many Resistance members. A survivor of the 8th des uh, Descent Operation, she continued to wage guerrilla warfare in the Pacific region thereafter. Unable to stop the ever-proliferating machines, she continued to fight a war of bitter attrition for over 200 years. God damn. After encountering the experimental Yorha Squadron, she sought to change the tide of battle through fighting alongside them. She was destroyed by machine lifeforms in the server room under Mount Ka'ala during the mission to destroy said server. Yeah, so yeah, A2 didn't die in the explosion. But I'm wondering, like, how, if everyone else died in the explosion? Was she just, just lucky? Or unlucky? However you want to see it. Because if, what was it, 4? Saved A2. Did she, like, shield the blast or something, I guess? I don't know. Member of the res resistance group led by Dahlia that was encountered by the experimental Yorha squadron. This unit was said to be unusually cautious and showed the greatest initial distrust of the experimental Yorha squadron. However, her disposition gradually grew more uh, amicable after scanner number 21 managed to eradicate a logic virus that infected one of her companions. She executed an infected unit, number 21 in the elevator hall of the Mount Ka'ala server facility and went missing shortly thereafter. Yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Seems like the story was how it was understood by Anemone, meaning she doesn't know what happened at the bottom of the elevator. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that too. The Pearl Harbor Descent Summary is the last of this. Okay. Um... So, for this descent, 12 experimental Yoha units were deployed to destroy the server located inside Mount Ka'ala on Oahu Island. However, they encountered heavy enemy anti-air defenses during the initial stage of this mission, resulting in the death of all but four squad members. The remaining units then joined up with members of a local resistance movement and decided to continue the mission despite their initial losses. Even in the face of a fierce enemy counter-strike and overwhelming numerical odds, a handful of units managed to reach the target location, at which point... Unit number four overloaded her fusion reactor and destroyed the enemy server. Okay, so number four was the one who actually blew up to do it. While the destruction of the server struck a blow against enemy forces, the true purpose of this operation was to monitor and research how the experimental Yorha units behaved during battle. This information would be would then be studied and integrated into new Yorha models once the project were to proceed past the experimental phase. One note of concern, uh... It has one unit of concern, or note of concern, it had been verified that the black box signal of the experimental unit, attacker number two, remains live. Due to the possibility of the unit being captured and compromised by the enemy, and due to the unit's existence itself being a matter of the high, highest level of confidentiality, it has been decided that it is to be recovered or disposed of by the Type E division once that group is fully operational. So we're on Ho oh, Hawaii, yeah, yeah, well, that was on Hawaii. This, I think, we guessed is like Canada or something, but I don't know. We're pretty close to the air where the first game took place. With Japan. I know we saw we had like a, a scene where it showed us going into Earth. And based on like where it moved, it looked like maybe we landed in Canada. Maybe it was just a transition that was vague enough so you didn't actually know where. But there's moose everywhere, so, you know, Canada. <laughs> okay, that was... That was interesting. What time is it? Oh, okay. Oh! Uh... Where the state sees it. There only commenceth the man who is not superfluous. Hmm. I see. It seems this Nietzsche was quite a profound thinker. Or perhaps he skipped right past profound and went straight to crazy instead. Oh well. Enough of that. I'd best go see the world for myself instead of burying my head in books. 
Wait, what? I was just about to save and wrap things up, but we'll see what's happening here. Can you hear me? Oh, perfect. Help it too. I have the materials. The village you asked me is to... in great trouble. The villagers are. Pascal! Pascal, are you there? What the hell is going on? Hypothesis. The valuable source of information known as Pascal has encountered difficulty. Proposal. Unit A2 should investigate Pascal's village immediately. I'm on my way. Hmm. That's probably a good place to stop if you want to start up as A2 again, because you won't want to stop and get too much further. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting that feeling already, like. About Yoko Taro games, what, that they're, they're all, like, sad? I've heard. I've been told. I've never played a Yoko Taro game. This is the first one. For a good person who has done nothing wrong, the world is going to do its best to destroy you. <laughs> it's fair. Do you have mail by chance? No. Oh, well, yeah, the mail comes with a bunker. The bunker's dead. Okay. Well. Bit of a cliffhanger. We had a, a lot of story and stuff for A2's background and Anemone and everything. It was pretty cool. I usually don't like going into like the, the lore and stuff of games. This game is too fucking good. Like, I want to know everything there is to know. It's so good. Um, and it presents itself really well, too. It's not just like... Like, what was the... We played Bravely Second, and there was all the lore papers we had to pick up. It's like, I'm not reading this. I could care less. But this game is very... The world is very engaging, and I want to know, like, more about all of it. I'm sure, like, whenever I, I finish the game entirely, I'm gonna go to YouTube and be like, all right, give me give me story videos, give me lore videos, give me the Vati video of Nier. Uh, but yeah. The music during those lore bits also helps. True. True. Okay. But we're going to... Probably reconvene on Monday with it. I don't know. We might do another Friday. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll have to think on it. Because the game's too fucking good. But, um... I do know, 100%. We're gonna, we're gonna stop. We're gonna switch gears. I'm gonna take a few minute break. Um... We can get... Some Fire Emblem going. 